Folks, welcome to another episode of. The Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the fucking. <laughs> we get someone else to do it. So I'll just find someone else to do it. Like fucking. <laughs> this is my dad. He's Connor O'Grady. In terms of yourself, it wasn't always surfaces like this. Um, you, like many, started off in the wonderful Summerhill College. You were part of that famous, uh, famous Summerhill team that won. I can't remember the year you won the All Ireland, but I think yourself. What year was it? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Yourself, uh, Cawley, Alan Cawley, Karen Martin, uh, Mickey Mack. There's a like Aubrey Dolan, Lee Marshall, Aubrey Dolan, Sean Lee Flannery. Marshall, Sean Flannery. Like yeah. they're kind of a bit of a. Bit of a kind of a regret that that whole group didn't get to come to the showgrounds at the one time and maybe say what you could do or I think absolutely I think it was a different club then as well though I, you know I, I, like we like seven or eight of us went down to play League of Ireland football as you said some of the lads went and, and, and played both played Gaelic and soccer um, club wasn't actually thriving and with a youth setup at the time they were trying to we, we probably should have had more of a team through I think there wasn't that Emphasis on youth then as well, and I think then fans wouldn't take if we eight lads went out, if nine lads went out, you know, and we were getting beaten every week, which probably would have happened at the start if we had a few experienced players around it. It might have made it a bit easier, but um, definitely I probably think you know we could have built the team around that, but I don't think the mindset there was was there from the club, and it wasn't there in terms of youth set up, and I don't think even fans, even though they always say we'd love to have eleven locals in the team, I think if you lose four or five games. You lose, you lose a hundred or two, and then you have another couple of hundred on your back. So, in ideal terms, it would have been great if that could have been the spine of the team here for for a couple of years. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. But as you said, some of the lads went on to play different things. Kieran obviously went to UCD, and Aubrey headed off to, to Germany after playing with Sligo and Gala for a while. And Shawnee was here for a few years. You know, but like you know, there, there some of his great memories, and we we obviously had a, a special team. But you know, just you know, it was good to see so many of them getting on and playing here at, at the time they did. Uh, it's actually it's, it's it's a gas story that when I was in Summerhill, I was never fortunate enough to actually win an All Ireland. A captain Summerhill to a Connacht title, um, but Lord rest his soul, Michael McGowan, uh, Skippy, probably the best teacher I ever had in my life, um, on or off away from football, just on a personal level, was so good to me and taught me so much. But uh, he'd hear that you got a yellow card or got a red card and he wasn't in, involved with the team written but I come into class the next day and he just absolutely mm -hmm. tear into me and it was always Alan Cawley and Conor O'Grady that he'd mentioned is always he wouldn't see Conor O'Grady at that I remember I got sent off after a game up in Hedford I think I kicked the dressing room door something ridiculous but it got back to him I was dreading going into school the next yeah, morning yeah, yeah. I got back to him and he went in the next morning and says you wouldn't see Conor O'Grady kicking dressing room doors but he was obviously he would have been a, ah, an influence yeah, on you in Summerhill he was a huge uh, Huge person and anyone's any well probably an, anyone's uh, walk of life in Summerhill, but obviously huge for me in terms of football and uh, mass respect for him and David Pugh as well. The two of them were, were were you know they were huge and you know little cogs of information over the years and he'd be all, he always a good man for a laugh. Knew when to give you you know a little <laughs> lift because you know they were probably like good cop and bad cop himself and and and, and, and David. But like massive, massive, uh, massive character, and you know, um, yeah, look, yeah, everyone loved him. Everyone loved him. You know, absolutely loved him. No more than Father Early. Everyone passed away recently as well. Everyone absolutely loved him. Was there ever any other sports that maybe Conor O'Grady could have played? Was there ever a chance that you were going to pull on the the black or the white jersey? Should we say back then? Of the best, like GA or I pulled it on. You pulled it on, so you played. I left uh, here in nine, uh, 2000. 
Uh, we, we got relegated with an all local team in 99. Okay. Uh, Paddy Callan, Johnny Davey, Ross McGlynn and just off the top of my head, including the lads I mentioned, Lee, Marshall, there was uh, all of us there, Pivy Park, Moran was the only one and, 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 and probably Nicky Bruges were probably the only two experienced but it was a mainly local team, we got relegated um, Tommy Casty was the manager, I played two games the following year um, I, played, I wouldn't have had a brilliant relationship with the manager Tommy Cassidy, I don't think anyone had a brilliant relationship with him to be honest <laughs> but, uh, and then the, I was played minor under 16 for Sligo. Uh, loved the ga- always loved the Gaelic. Still playing it with St Mary's, and uh, got an opportunity to play. With, I actually played for my club in the championship game and missed the game here, and that was kind of the start of it. And then I got a I got a job in the bank in Dublin, and I was uh, Peter Ford as the manager TJ, and I was in the squad that year. Played a couple of league games and came on in a couple of league games, and uh, I okay, we got to the under 21 kind of final. Neil beat Galway in the semi-final and Neil beat us and uh, yeah I love Gaelic but I was ne- I never had the the growth for it that I had for this and um, did you find it hard to leave the leave the the ruggedness let's say of the GEA behind you and go down to the soccer pitch or I suppose back then you were probably be allowed a bit more physical on the football oh, pitch soccer was soccer was first tackle Neil yeah. fella, like it was really and it was even when you come in here like. We came in here at 16, uh, on, there was an under-18 team yeah. here at the time, John Lynch and, and Glenn Young were running it, and like, John, the Lynch, Lynch was brilliant, and, and, and so was Glenn. And, um, but like you were training with the reserves down there, Fago was the reserve team manager, we were in the, the local league, and like you could, be, you could be playing with older lads, and like, back then you'd, they'd kick you. And you know, once you were in their training, they considered you fair ball, and they, you know, it was, it was, they'd encourage you, but it was it was it was very very physical back then, um, probably too physical, but it's probably gone too far the other way for me now, you know way too far the other way. You know you can't touch anyone now, and I think the whole rolling around has affected the the mindset as well and uh, you know, of people. You know you probably get to t- touch now he's rolling around where, you know, if if, if I got tackled you'd be trying to get up as yeah. quick as possible. But most lads of our era would have been. Would. You'd be trying to get up and. Sh- I'm probably showing no weakness, which was probably stupid as well. But oh well, the tackle is is being gradually taken out of the game. Yeah. I think, um, and it's it's an art really as well. Like there's there's some there's been some great tacklers here over the years, and I actually would say one of the best tacklers we ever had is Richie Ryan, and yeah. no one had ever looked at that part of his game. He was a brilliant. He was a great man to slide in and just pull the ball away. He'd be know? happy to hear that now. Yeah, well. no, but he, he, genuine. I always said it. He was one of them fellas that could actually, you know, everyone looks, and he was an unbelievable player. But he was someone who could actually tackle brilliantly. Do you know what I mean? You know, people always go on about schools could never tackle. Richie, who was such a technical player, could actually tackle. But yeah, it's just I suppose it's the way it's gone. Everything has gone so so PC you now, and everything you can't hammer hammer anyone on the pitch, or you know, everything is just everything is just it's gone too far the other way for me. You know, you could have a bit of banter, you could hammer a fella on the pitch verbally, he could hammer you back, you could tackle a fella, you know, hard as well. And he tackle you back, and then I shake hands and walk off the pitch, and that was the way it was. And that was the it way. Was forgotten about. Yeah, that's the yeah. way. That's the way. It's, that's the way it should be. We had over take a wee seat in the stand. It's getting a little bit chilly here. Connor, talk to me about how the 2001 move to Cork City came about. A long way away from Sligo. Yeah. Um, well, it was nearly happened in 2000. Um, I left, as I said, I left to go to play at the Gaelic for a year, which I loved, had a great year. Um, but I was never going to stay. And I don't, I don't think maybe, maybe I could have. But um, Sligo were in the first division here. Maybe at the time I felt I was above the first division. I don't know. Um, I was around the international teams at the time, and I suppose I felt I wanted to be playing, and I wasn't happy with the way things were here. So I went playing Gaelic for a year. I lived in Dublin with a lot of Sligo lads, Kieran Martin, and all the lads, Philip Galler. It was quite a group. Great crack. <laughs> and, uh, um, so yeah, and as I said, Derek Mountfield was the manager in 2000, and he rang me, and I'd made my mind up to go to to uh, Gaelic, and I had the job in the bank, and, and then Liam Murphy took over the following year, and he rang me again, and I I I, I made my mind up that once I'd finished the um, the guy and I had the contract in the bank, I was going to go to Cork, and that was it. Really moved down. Absolutely loved it. Great, biggest club in the country. With all due respect, the Shamrock yeah. Rovers, not, like, they could get 10,000 at a game <laughs> to drop of a hat, like, you know what I mean? And it's a massive city, um, great sporting city, um, great place to play, just loved it. When I went down the first year, it was kind of the end of the, the old team, 
Some Murray, of the players were moving Murray on. Murray and Caulfield were retiring. Declan Daly, Stephen Napier, Ali Callow went to Shelburne, and uh, you know a few others said. But then it was the start then of you know George Callow and Dan Murray, signed Dan Murray, and uh, yeah, we'd have just a few great years there. I loved it, and uh, I suppose the main reason I came back was. Uh, Kind of wanted to settle down here. Okay. You know, I didn't feel it was, you know, you're renting a house, you wanted to buy a house, so I wanted to kind of settle down. And, and uh, but there was a year in Derry in between, wasn't there? So oh no, you, yeah, I can't, but I, I lived here though. You lived so here I, while you travelled yeah, up and down. Yeah, I was with Dicey. Okay, Dicey so Dicey was mad at the time. Yeah, so okay. myself and uh, uh, Kieran Kelly. You sign. didn't get much sleep in that carriage. No. Already, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was good crack. I'd say it's so. Crack. Um, yeah, it was myself, Kieran Kelly, uh, travelling with him. Um, Alan Murphy, maybe Alan, he signed Alan at the time. David Ford, Fordy was travelling up with us at times as well as so we'd be travelling up. Oh, we, it, was, uh, it didn't happen for me really up there, to be honest. Um, I was in and out of the team. Gavin left through the, halfway through the year. Stephen Kenny came in then. And uh, to be fair to Stephen, he wanted me to, to move up and, and sign, but I just started a job in 3G Mobile. It was for the Aircom stores, and uh, as I say, looking to settle, because the league was so volatile, like, you know, you seen what happened to Cork, a couple, I know they won the league after I left and all that, but a couple of years later, yeah. in the first thing, it happened to Shells, it happened to so many, it was so, yeah, it was so volatile, you were like, I need to get something, because I had no education, mm. so I need to get something, a job, just in case you're hitting 25 and you're thinking, you know, in hindsight it was probably daft, mm. I should have just stayed at the football full time and concentrated on it more, but, but uh, yeah, so, Stephen wanted me to move I says, no, I'm not going to move up there, and uh, probably should have moved up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, there you know, the decisions, there, you there decisions you make. Rovers have been on to me to come back. Sean Connor, and I, I, I think. And Rovers were still in the first division first when you division, came back, yeah, wasn't so? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're actually some of my best memories. Some I know, like we had the, the glory years from 2010 onwards. But when you were that age, uh, some of the first division games here against. Uh, the likes of Kilkenny or Kildare, some of the memories I have been in that shade are probably, they're nearly some of them are as good as maybe not the Aviva and that, but they certainly yeah. are memories you cherish, you know. But I think the shed is like, you're talking about the shed there, the shed, I was in the shed as a kid. Yeah, like the shed is, it's something the fans, you do. The fans who've come in in the last couple of years and see all this, mm. you haven't been in the shed. Mm. It's, it's a different experience. Yeah, it is, it it's is. It's a completely different experience. And even for a player coming out over there, because when I came in first, that would have been the dressing room. So you came through the, the, the tunnel. mesh tunnel. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you would have been dodging the puddles coming in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And into the dressing room, and out the mesh, and a big game. You know, you could hear the place hop. I think, yeah, the show was just a brilliant experience. You know, yeah. Squashed up yeah. against the fence or <laughs> whatever it was, just throwing paper up when the, when the players come out. It was all innocent stuff, but... You know, I suppose it's so. It's a real family experience now. Where you come in with your family, you go and have your burger yeah. and chips, and it's 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 probably of much more cultured and probably better for the family. Yeah, of course. Whereas the fathers come down here one side, and the kids yeah. all went into the shed. You know, or yeah. if you were allowed into the shed, so it was just. Uh, I always, I always, I'd love to see a stand yeah. there again. I know it'll never be a shed, but something there again would be just because uh, that was the main and the main part of the ground for me when I came in first because the dress rooms were and the Really intimidating for opposing team, and really intimidating if you haven't done well, because they're going to tell you going in that ball <laughs> if you haven't done well. I actually heard a great story that you and were you and Alan, Alan Cawley the first two people on the pitch after the '94 Cup final win. Oh, we were the first two, but we weren't far <laughs> you off. You weren't far off. Yeah, two quick uh, lads. Yeah, we were in the, the end where Carry scored. Not, not here, obviously. In yeah. Lansdowne Road, Lansdowne Road, and then um, yeah, we just made our way down, and you know at that time it was the old you could run under the thing and. <laughs> So we were mental. I was what age were you? I was fourteen, was... but I was a ma I was yeah. coming in here from I was eight or nine. Yeah. So and we lived we lived in in Rose Hill for eight years. So, you know, I could see the <laughs> I could see the Jinx Avenue side of the pitch from my bedroom. So you know what I mean. This place was this place was meant so much to me as a fan. Even never mind and my grandparents' house is just at the back at the back of the main stand. So, I was reared in the place really. But uh, yeah, so like we were on the pitch. We were traveling to away. Started traveling to away games about thirteen. You know. Going up on up the, the RES in the train, you probably don't remember Martin McDonald's volley. Eddie Allen score. I watched the tape yeah. a million times. Unbelievable yeah. days going to that loan. We beat that loan to get promoted. Gabby Dini, think the keeper. Gabby Dini. I think the Dickie boys got the other one and running on the pitch at the end. Yeah. So we thought we were on the burnabout. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's unreal.
is there a is there more pressure on the local lad from Sligo going on to that pitch there? And is there less have you less room to make mistakes than let's say a lad that's come over from England? Yeah, probably yeah. See I never looked at it as pressure. Okay. Right, to be honest. I had enough pressure on myself. All I wanted to do was go out and win. That was my main was to go out and win the game and after that, yeah, you're a local. There is unbelievable pride in playing for club you love. Oh, there's nothing. There's there's no there's no better feeling than playing for a club you've come in and supported. You've, you've, I, li I lived in the area, you know. Um, there's no there's no better feeling. I've, I think they're the first ones to get the grief, but then then if you hear if ah, there's not enough locals playing, you're always here. But then yeah, the locals they are the playing. Same, yeah, yeah. They're getting murdered. <laughs> like see John Mahan playing for me, and Liam Kerrigan when he was here. And even Jack Heaney, because his dad was, yeah. his family or Sligo. Mm -hmm. I'd have unbelievable grow towards them because they're local lads. Mm -hmm. You want, and you, you're hoping they'll do well. Mm -hmm. And you want to see, like, I always think there's a couple of lads there that are from the town, from the county. And even my own now, and I know it's not the same, but they're so intertwined now because of the underage and everything. That it is, it's a lift. And people want to come in and see their own mm -hmm. playing for the club. They don't want to see 11 lads from. Nothing. Scattered. Yeah, and yeah. it is great. One we've had, yeah, unbe we've had unbelievable servants yeah. from all over the world. All over, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, the dream would be to see eleven locals play, but I can't see it ever happen to be honest. So we get to the, the glory years and the, and the cup final and that and cookie and that in, in a couple of minutes. But without that first division title, none of that is ever even a reality. So well, you talk me through yeah, that season. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think in fairness, Sean Connor assembled really. Does good. Sean Connor take a bit too much stick? Now, you know, he's he's not the most liked character on Sligo. Yeah. He did bring it back to the Premier League. Where do you sit on the... Well, look, whatever people think about him, whatever people dislike or like him, he can't deny what he did. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we were what, five or six years in the first division. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, not looking like getting up. And uh, he brought in, I think, he established a really good team. He got good players in. And I, he had an eye for a good player. He got Coleman here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you have to give him a lot of credit for that. And to get it to get out that first division is a is a nightmare of division. Really hard to get out of. And in fairness to him, you know, John O'Hara, goalkeeper, as good a goalkeeper probably that was ever in the showgrounds, people probably won't think that because he was only here a year for two, but he was he was he was Mackey was on that year as well, wasn't he? Mackey Mackey scored about five headers, yeah, didn't he? Mackey and Burnsy. <laughs> but sure Mackey was yeah, Mackey top, was class. top drawer. Burnsy, top drawer. You know, myself in the middle. Bit of, I was probably a bit of experience from playing. I think you have Shawnee Flannery up front. You know, you're a really good, good spine there, and uh, you know we've got good squad, great lads. And uh, but then even after that, he brought in Adam Hughes and Piersy, and you know he, he brought in a lot of good yeah, players. He assembled the good squad. Yeah, Vaz, I'm not going to try and pronounce the second. Name. Yeah, yeah, we won't try and pronounce that. Yeah, Sovage, I should know it, but uh, yeah, he brought in a lot of good players, and I think look, you with the nail on the head, you don't have the following success. If you don't bring it, if he doesn't do that, and I don't, you're probably right, he probably doesn't get the credit he deserves, and he should get that credit. Connor, one of the, the biggest characters to walk into this dressing room in the last, I suppose, ever uh, was the Liverpool, the famous Paul Cook. Yeah. Um, what was it like when he came in, or did the players know much about him before he came in? Or? Well, I didn't, to be honest. I have to be straight up and honest, I had to Google him. <laughs> and uh, that's and that's been str I like I was so glad to get back after the whole fiasco with Rob McDonald and Paul Cook was announced. I had the clue who he was, but then I read up on him and uh, he had a really brilliant football career. Like, and were you long? But did it take you long to know if it just the filling all the stuff, or was it did it was it a slower process? Was it the players he brought in? Or ah, you knew straight away. You knew straight away the way he talked and everything. You knew straight away, and, and you know he like. He, he was just, you know, you'll hear all the lads, I've said it so many times and it's, you don't want to be repeated. Brilliant man manager, brilliant man manager. Got the best out of the lads and, you know, knew the, knew the game inside out. Knew the game, wanted the game played the right way, played at high tempo, knew what to do in games. And, you know, and, but just, just, I even now, if he came into this restaurant yeah. and says to me, go out there and go show the wall, I go show him. And I'd probably build it back up and try and go through it again for him. But that's, you do anything. That's the way I felt. You do anything. You didn't want to let him down. Okay, so he was one of those characters. You, you, it was like the, when you got caught drinking for the first time you were younger. You were, well, you it were, wasn't. There was an element. There was an element. <laughs> yeah. 
it was a little bit of a fair there, but yeah. I, I liked him so much, yeah. and I still like him. It's not like you just I love I nearly most fans. I say I love them. I love playing under you know you That's want to play. Yeah, and even now, the first one of the first things you look at the weekend is how are we can do. Do you know what I mean? You're hoping they're doing well because you want them to do well. Did he make your game kind of improve with the players he brought in? Because it seemed the players were just flowing in, good quality players. Was Conor O'Grady thinking I'm going to have to fight and play better than I ever have here in my career to get me the place on the pitch? I always would have been that way. Okay. I think, you know, you come in first as a young fella, you know, you always would have had that, you were fighting for your place and, you know, you were always looking around the dressing room to see, yeah, that was all, that would have always been in me in fairness. I think definitely when better players come in, I would have had a cork big time as well. But you're, you're constantly competing for your place, you get in, you try and hold on to the jersey. Um, but I just think he brought the best out of everyone and... Uh, Everyone, everyone really wanted, to, really wanted to be in the eleven to get out and play. Like we were a nightmare to play against because we played at such a high tempo, and um, we we played such really good football. And he, he, what people don't know, we were unbelievably fit. I remember playing Bray one night, and Colleen was playing for Bray, and we went down to a hotel after, it might have been the, near, the, near the end of the season, and like the Colleen came out, all the Bray lads were like, on Ray. We were just, yeah. we were just absolutely never give them a second. Then when you get the ball, everything was pace, and, you know, we were just, he couldn't accept it. That was the toughest game we've had all year. Yeah, we, were probably, we were probably fifth in the table maybe, you know, so. Then memories, I suppose, the, the Kilke years at the start, the, like he was just, he was unreal. He brought this kind of, he brought this life back into the town. Yeah. And another character that came in at the, in around the, at the same time would have been uh, Joseph, Joseph and Doe. How good was he? Well, I think he was the greatest player to probably ever, <laughs> ever. Probably. I don't know, did he get forward there recently as the best player that ever played, or did the he? best import maybe? Yeah, he, you can argue for what? Yeah, he was just, he was an unbelievable player, he was unbelievable. I remember we were playing Shelburne, he was playing Shelburne. I always told the stories to a few people, I don't think I ever told Zoe. But I used to sit beside him over there, like a gas man. And uh, Shelburne was a great team at the time, you know, really good team. And we uh, were in the leagues at the time, and uh, we were, I think we were training down. He was taking the mic, taking the mic out of everyone. <laughs> He's saying, I'm going to bust this for now. I'm going to bust it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was the most ridiculous thing ever, if you say it. He's the thing running with the ball. And what people don't realise is, he's like that wall there. It's yeah, just like it's hitting a wall. <laughs> so I said, well, you're going to get it right with Dover. Boom. <laughs> and I was just on the ground. And all I could like say was him just going with the ball. You know, he was just, he was, you know, he had that unbelievable strength and just brilliant, brilliant. But like, look, he's playing, he's not too yeah, right. He's, like, he, he's an African Nations Cup winner, like, you know, people forget that sort of stuff. When you go on the pitch with him, the opposition are, yeah, but the opposition are afraid straight away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, look, thinking of, thinking of him straight away. And yeah, Ron, we, like, we had Jim Lachlan the year before. Unbelievable pro as well. I think there was players coming in over the years that had a huge influence. I would put down Jim Lachlan as a huge influence in the dressing room that time. You know, great lad. Ventry was a great lad. Great, yeah, great fella. Yeah, yeah. Great fella in the restroom. Okay. Great fella. No, but good lad. Good. Like, is I that know. what makes a good restroom? Is it a mix, a mix of characters? Oh, well, you have to have a mix of characters. But to be some lads in the dressroom you won't like. Okay. And that probably wouldn't like me. But like, you know, that's you that's. You play well. You play, you play on the pitch with them. You don't have to be best friends. Okay. For Are you better teams the ones that more players get on well, or is it just? Oh, I know. I'd say. I'd say. I'd say. I'd say I, I, I'm sure there was lads in the dressing room that didn't like each other. And I would be definitely 100% sure of that. Okay. 100% sure of that. But like we had a lot, a lot of great characters here, good characters, and they wanted to win. You know, like me and Piers used to murder each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but his dad came up to me at the start. I said, "You're having, you're having. Why are you having to go with my son?" I said, "Because he's a good player." That was the only reason. And I was probably, I was killing him on the pitch. Yeah. But he'd be killing me back then, you know. And then like, but that, but then when it was over. Don't even want to we wanted to win. We just wanted to win. That was the, that was the thing. Right. I suppose I'm skipping ahead a bit because we are going to talk. Yeah, I know you're heavily involved in coaching now, so we may, we'll talk about it after. But just while you mentioned that, is that element almost gone as well? Like, of a 15, 16, 17, 18 year old, you have to be so careful what you say now in a dressing room or before or after a game. Or Well, look, I suppose. Is that society even, that's changed? Yeah, even the way we were talked as kids, you know, <laughs> you, you know, in Summer Hill, yeah. here, like, you know, I had Fago as a reserve manager. Like, Fago, F you out of it. But that's the way he was spoken yeah. to. And that was the way, you know. The way he brushed it off. But like, yeah, but I don't think it, like some, it didn't, it wasn't good for everyone. But it didn't affect me personally. Like, 
Cookie was there a couple of times with me, that close, you know, screaming in my face. We, I, 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 I used to get the enforcement job in Lamar compared to and uh, I always... You were fit, uh, yeah, but I, I was, it is a bit of a compliment, but uh, Keith Fahey, Kieran Marin, all these things, you get on him, you do a job on him, <laughs> don't get <laughs> So I got John Russell in Galway. John Russell was playing with Galway. Like, Don't get, give him a <laughs> <laughs> So that literally, get on him for the game. Don't touch him. I think it was a time TG Carr were doing the games, you know. First 20 minutes, I haven't been a bust nervous. <laughs> <laughs> right? He hasn't touched the ball. <laughs> Next thing, I took me eye off in the second. He scored, right? <laughs> Marilyn made it, and made it scored. So we didn't want all. But have you ever been in Terryland? Of course I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Freshman's only this size. And he's just absolutely. And I have no problem, because my job is to stop him. But he was. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can play for now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't argue with him. I couldn't argue with him, because his, my role that, that day was to stop him from playing, and I hadn't done my job. But if, if that happened now, I don't think players reactions. Is it right? Is it wrong? Was he right? Was you know? For me, it was that was the environment I was brought up in, and I I, I could accept that. Um, but there's players that the probably the players back then probably couldn't accept it either. But I think it's completely gone out of the game, and it's gone. We're just gone too far, way too far out the other way. I think in my my eyes anyway. Connor, we're here on the the hollow turf. What would you give just for uh, for one more round of ninety minutes out here after in, full, in front of a full crowd? Yeah, look, yeah, you give everything. Um, you, you know, when I came in here at 16 years of age, you didn't think like that. It goes really quick, and uh, yeah, look, this is what this is what it was all about, really, to be out here every second week and to be away from home every every other week, you know. But does that compare to? Uh, there's no buzz like no it. I have to like be honest. It. Yeah, there's no like it's not the Premier League, but it was our, it was our Premier League, mm. if you know what I mean. And, yeah, as I said earlier on, it's just everything you want. But as a kid, was to come out and play here and yeah. you know to get that chance. Look, it's something I'm, I'm very proud of. Um, my great days here. Um, but yeah, I'd give anything to come back and have them days again. You know? Talk about one of the the biggest days I remember. I remember it well. It was the 2010 FAI Cup final? Was was that a moment that uh, it might? Is it fair to say it would have been unfair for you to go through kind of your career? You had been such a good servant to Rovers. That if you hadn't finished on that, to, you know, to get that medal, it kind of—I'm not going to say retire with, with pace, but if you had lost that cup final and then gone on to retire, it's probably something you'd be thinking about every day. Especially after missing the penalty. Yeah, yeah. What was in your head when after you hit the penalty? Because it looks like it's going in. You sent the keeper yeah. the wrong way. There, there's nothing really in your head. You're just, I suppose. On the way back, are yeah, you you're just, half devastated, but you realise that it's not over and yeah. you have to get on with it and. Everything else, it's it's something that hasn't cost me a moment's talk because we won. Because you won. But I'd say if we hadn't won, just what you said there yeah. a minute ago, it'd be something that'd go with you to your grave. To be yeah. honest. But it ha on, genuinely, I would of course love to have scored, but it doesn't cost me an absolute second. And that's been honest because of, you know we won the game. That was the most important thing. And um, yeah, it's just one of them things. Pick your spot, and go for it. And it didn't go in. That was it. That's Kelly came up with the saves. And yeah. Doyler and got Doyler and Gary McCabe stuck. Doyler and McCabe stuck his actually, yeah. As well he watched it today, there's some they hit some bad penalties now. Some players I think Chris Turner missed, Twig missed, uh, Paddy Flynn. Paddy Kavna. Hit, Chris Turner hits his straight on the middle that track he does some weird kind of flippy movement or something like that. But it was a great day and I think it kinda kick started everything. I know that was your kinda your final hurrah, but certainly do you feel that that was the the right time then to go? Or well, like, I would you rather stay it on? I was offered a con. See, the whole thing comes back to what we spoke about earlier on about working. I was still working. I hadn't played a lot that season. I was in and out of the team, really. Um, you know, I was 30 going and hitting for 31. Um, you know, in hindsight, I probably should have stayed. Give up my job at 30. Would you do it? You're not going to do it. But um, I was offered a contract. It wasn't a great contract, to be honest. It was probably a, a contract to say, look. We can't say we let him go, but we'll, we'll offer yeah. him a contract that he'll probably refuse. Um, but look, it's it's nothing. Again, it's it's not. I, of course, I would, I would have loved to stay in hindsight, but it wasn't for me. If I, I was working and all that, I'd be minding it up. I went to Harps, which was a bad decision. Okay. Um, but 
Was it just where harps were at the time, ah, or was it just when, the, get, when you get to, if I left at twenty, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't have been a bad, it wouldn't have been a bad. You leave at thirty, you've been here, you're older, you know. When you leave here, it's not the same. Okay, it's not the same when you're older. Like at twenty, it was different. You're you're still going. You know, you're not coming back. Exactly. Yeah. I think that was I think that was the thing. And I remember our first game, Rovers were against Derry for harps. Rovers played Derry in Derry. Big Derby? Yeah, and I think that was the first game. I think I could be wrong, I think Rogers might have saved a penalty that night. Or we scored a penalty, one one nil anyway. And if I was going up to Valley Buffet to play, I can't even remember who we were playing. And uh, truth be told, I would have preferred to be going to Derry that night than going to yeah. Valley Buffet, to yeah. be honest. And yeah. y- y- even then probably I wasn't being true to myself, okay. I should have just said here, you know what? Did I, you have that moment where you thought, you know what, I can't play at this level anymore or was it well, like, Mallard, I played again up there that year and they didn't offer me a contract the following year and I was really disappointed because I really enjoyed it up there. I don't think I was as fit as I ever was but I don't think I was. Uh, the legs were gone but uh, you know I would have played on. If they had offered me a contract I would have played on definitely. Yeah. My heart wasn't in after I left here. Yeah, now okay. I enjoyed Ballin Mallard a lot. It was a great little club. And they're good lads up there. Yeah and it was, it was different. It was good to yeah. see. My last game was yeah. in Windsor Park, which was amazing. The cool. old Windsor Park, like when I think yeah. back now, great to beat Linfield up there, and great to beat, Col- beat, beat Coleraine and Coleraine. Like, no one knew who we were and what we were about, really. And uh, No, I enjoyed that, but I think down here, once I left here, it was, it was, it was gone. My heart was gone, really. Well, it's getting a bit breezy here, so I think the next step for you is doing a bit of coaching, Connor. So I think we talk about that no, in the dugout and get out of this wind. Connor, we talked about Summerhill College and your transition from secondary school into Sligo Rovers. Was there your coaching now yourself? Obviously, you're coaching the 15s, and I remember at that age when you have someone of stature um, influencing you. It's they play a big part. Was there anybody in Sligo Rovers or anyone else that played a big part in your career? And well, I suppose all my coaches have have given me great help. Uh, you know, from Danny Garvey and Merville to. My last one at Palin Mallard, Heidi Anderson, they all were all they were all different influences and I had look when you think of Helen or Kenny, Stephen Kenny, Pat Dole and Cookie, you know, played, the best. played a lot of played under a lot of great Brian Kerr, played under a lot of great managers and you pick little bit, bits from all of them. Um I suppose when I came in here at first, um a massive influence would have been Fago, John Lynch, as I said earlier on, and, and we would have had Niall Harrison obviously with the slightly late squads, who was unbelievable when I look back to have him have him managing us and coaching us. Um, and then a major one for me coming in here would have been Chris Rutherford. He would have been a major influence okay. on, 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 on me and you know, always had a word in my ear, a good word and was always encouraging but could give you a, a little rollicking as well when you <laughs> needed it. And I think, you know, I think he's another, uh, I know he'd be well known for everything he did on the pitch but I think he gets very, he's very undervalued in what he did here for a lot of, a lot of young lads and you know, a lot of lads w- went on to have good careers because of him being involved with them, um, and you know he had good standards. Oh, he sets standards high. He was a good, good man, and you know I think a lot of people uh, really look, looked up to him as I did. And like I in that it. time, you had Park Moore in the dressing room, who <laughs> someone you would have really looked up to yeah. because you'd be coming from being a supporter. And you know he was a guy you know that you really looked up to. Him and Chrissy were were, were great influences on 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 that team. And obviously you know we won the league cup final that year. And, um, you know, they would have been massive influences in, on me and how I would have tried to portray myself in the dressing room, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so Connor, you're now involved with still with Sligo Rovers. You can't get away from here. Yeah. Uh, it's the the fifteens that you're with, right? So yeah. talk to me about Connor O'Grady, the coach. I'm not going to ask you with the word philosophy, but how do you like your team to play, or how do you set them out to? Well, like, there's an absolute. Uh, Coaching football has gone mad now. Okay. It's gone mad. Everyone, it's all about. Is it overcoached? Absolutely. Okay, there's, right. Okay. There's, there's overkill. There's overkill completely okay. in it. Uh, I think big thing is first thing is that, that I've learned from have a good relationship with the lads. You know, good relationship. You know, get a good relationship going with them, make them feel special and important because well, usually the air they're, and when they're, they're in here, they're more than likely elite players. They can all handle the ball. Most, you know, 99% of them are coming in here can look after the ball, and it's not, don't be on top of them. A lot of it is let them play, let them learn, 
give them little bits of information. So let them make mistakes. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think it's too structured now. You stand there, you go over there, you go over there, you go over there. Sure. They're not they're not they're not learning. Do you know what I mean? They have to make mistakes. They have to get a kick from a fella when they don't release the ball quick enough. I would might you know. They have to they have to lose the ball in areas. They have to make they have to shoot and kick it over the bar. They're not gonna shoot every ball into the net. And it's it probably taken me a while to realise that. I think everyone was got obsessed with playing out from the back in this country mm. as well. You've got to play out from the back. You can't play out from the back. Yeah, the whole Barcelona thing. Hey, if you don't have the players, you can't do it. Yeah. Now, we have the players here to do that. We can do that. But I also like us to be able to go and hit the right winger. Or hit, if we have a centre forward up there, like we have centre forward there this year, give it to them. You know, it doesn't always have to be... A, you can pass the ball from there to there. It's not a, a, a launch. You can pass it. You know, we can play out. I love to see it played in the midfield. But I, I think we have to be flexible and we're... we're very gone very mad into it. We have to be this we have to be four or four two, yeah. we have to be four or three three. I'm of the belief that play different ways. Yeah. Play different ways. I, I teach them different ways how to play. And I know people will disagree with me and that's the whole beauty of the whole yeah. thing. It's like we played a team a couple of years ago. We were six nil up after fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. They kept playing out from the back. If you looked at the centre half you'd think their boots were on the wrong fit. Yeah. Right? And you know, what they were doing to the kids was destroying them. Okay. Because they weren't they able weren't to do able that. To do and they were giving away the ball and we were scoring. We were pressing them up high because we knew they couldn't do it. And we were taking the ball off them and scoring. Whereas I, uh, I'm i not... Uh, play it to the winger. Or play it out here and, you know... It's got to be reality too. It's got to be real. Because, you know, all this playing doesn't happen on a November night up in Finn Harps if the pitch is in muck. You know, it has, to be, it has to be real. And I think players have to be adaptable. And I think that's a big problem now. Sometimes players are coming in and they're not adaptable. Keeping us down the ball. The keeper thinks I have to kick it to the right full back or the centre yeah. half. You don't have to kick it to the full back or centre half. And the keeper has to make a decision himself. It hasn't be I'm on the line, you know, yeah. telling him what to do. He has to put the ball down. If, if we're giving him faith to come in here and play, you make the decision. It's your decision to make. It's not my decision to make. You've got to pick the best, best option for us to, uh, or us as a team. Not the best option for me, for my philosophy. Okay. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's I. That's my opinion. I think that's what's. There's, there's, there's are you happy with the structure, the way it's done, let's say the 15s, the 17s? Are you happy with the way the league have, have set that up? I'd Does it no, benefit I'd, them? No, I'd have no under 30, I'd have an under 14 league, under 15, under 17, I'd have no 19 mm. And nothing, you're either good I, at No, no, I, I, well I was brought up in the reserve era, okay. where you played reserve football. At 16 or 17 for me, if you're okay. good enough, and this is again, this is my personal yeah. opinion, you've got to be playing it up at a higher level. So even go to the first division and take your kicks? Is this, is well, this no, no I'd, I'd love to see a reserve league or an under-21 league come okay. back in again where you play it. Because that 19s league for me is just sometimes... It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like the 23 league in the Premier League where it's kind of... that They're hanging around there too long. You're not really being tested. Well, like, if you don't have lads at that age that are going to be stepping up, yeah. they're just there for the sake of being there. Which, for me, is wrong. We're better off probably to have the under-17 team playing the under-19 <laughs> league. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to give them the test. Whereas I'd love to see... Um, you know, my first game for the, the reserve team, I think, was in was it Castle Bar Celtic, 16 against men. I done you no harm. You got the kicks. F Fago, there you go, sir. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, but you got yeah. the kicks, you got to learn, you got to know how to play, you know, you got yeah. to, you play with older players, you get to understand the different things. And uh, I just think we're so obsessed with Spain and Holland and all these countries. And we've got to do this. And everyone has got a philosophy and it's great. By all means, you know, I you come in here, you want to see the ball on the deck. You don't want to see it in the air. But I'm saying sometimes you have to get the ball at this stand. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It has to be. Do you know what I mean? And uh, you know, if the ball comes up into the air, you're gonna to have to go and hit it. You can't take it down in your chest all the time. And to, you know, it's it's. So they're being taught to overthink it and overplay. We've lads but coming in that can't hit the ball. Man. Okay. They can't hit the ball because it's never been done to them. And they've, they've never had to. Not to. The defenders and midfielders have never hit yeah. the ball. So the physical element, even at that age, I don't even think it's that they're not being told that. It's because it's not. There's, there's no one doing. There's no one doing heading the ball. No one practicing heading. No, the simple, you know what I mean? yeah, basic, the basics, basics are gone. The basics are the the basics. I do. I have my lads tortured up. Ball against the wall. Ball against the wall. Now most of their touches would be. They would, but it's just practice. They practice. And does that go back to let's say when when you were growing up and and that kind of the golden generation and Summer Hill that we talked about. They were all street footballers. Well, Maybe with the parts, of, uh, the exception of Flannery, who was drunk Clifford, yeah, the odd one or two. So if you, if you ask anyone that worked in Flannery's car sales, 
Yeah. yeah. Flannery had to bouncing the ball off the, the wall. Yeah. And God be good to poor old Andy Tiernan. He yeah. used to have to turn off the lights out there on the Flannery. <laughs> Flannery would be out there kicking the ball up in the air. Touch. <laughs> I yeah. completely yeah. missed the ball, yeah. allowing yeah. Flannery to gather yeah. possession, yeah. and he calmly yeah. ran with Robbie Hogan before yeah. sliding the ball into an empty and a, a net, and effectively <laughs> uh, killing yeah. off the game. Yeah. Yeah. Off the lights on, you know, and um, I, I think it's starting to come around a wee bit again, and I think it might come again. Okay. You, see, you start to see kids out in the street again, and Kick playing, the ball. and you're hoping that 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 that'll come back because that's it's it's practice. Now I know the whole thing has changed, computers and technology yeah. and everything, but. Uh, we we were street footballers. We were all out in the street from yeah. that morning to night. You know, you, you dragged in. Well, you went home to forget. <laughs> yeah. you went home to eat. Yeah, and back out. And it wasn't always football. It might be something else, whatever it may be. But I think that's a thing that would be great to come back and, and see players doing it. You know. How do you see? Is actually before we go on, it's nice you mentioned Andy Tierney because he was an absolute gent and as the, as the, a legend as any player that ever yeah. came into this club. So it was nice of you to. Well, I'd to on the list. Well, I'd be. Would have been unbelievably close. I would have a yeah. great chance after games here with him. He'd be out doing the yeah. fork. And this was kind of before warm yeah. downs. I used to. They're the out. characters that make the league. He was great. And like Andy would always come over to you and he'd say, even if you were useless, he'd tell you you were good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'd be nearly going, Andy, I was useless. Oh, you weren't too bad, son. You know. You know. Yeah. Where, gent. Yeah. It was class. Like him and Mickey Robinson. Though, I would have been. I would have been very close. To him. Yeah. I would have had an unbelievable time yeah. for them, and they would have been always encouraging me. You know, even at the start, and again, go back to holding. They were great to see. They probably been the same probably to Sean, and if they were around now, they would probably be doing it to John Mann, or they probably the same to Taxi. Yeah. And Raph and everyone else, they were. They loved to see Sligo people. In they the were like neighbour's child, Mickey Robinson was the yeah. neighbour's child. Neighbour's child. child. You know, so <laughs> they were. They were brilliant people, and uh, as you said, they're they're, they're characters. They're they're. They're not around as much anymore in football no. clubs, unfortunately. Uh, so with Conor O'Grady at the Sligo Rovers under 15, where do we, where do we see the? I know we're in the away dugout. The, will we see over there someday? Is the 17s? Do you enjoy maybe the coaching the kids more because they listen more than adults maybe? Or well, eventually, do you want to get to that kind of level? I think you're right. ambitious. Yeah, I wouldn't be yeah. doing it. I, I'm on my elite UA license at the okay. moment. The club have been great, but I'm putting through, putting through my licenses. I, I, I fell into this really, uh, I wasn't doing anything and uh, John Russell got a few of us, Piersy and Keno involved in the emerging talent mm -hmm. and Raf and uh, I ended up going into a group, Seamus Kyo, by Kyo yeah. Luck. Um, it's so important to keep those characters that were successful at the club well, though and, and bring them back in though. Well that was like a leitrim now, that was the emerging talent and that's where I started and I, I really liked it, yeah. I really enjoyed it and you know you try to improve and you're it's, you're being around good lads, and then the under 15 thing came up, and myself and Marcel decided we'd go for it. And uh, Raf went up with the 19s then, and uh, we had 20 and we've had 20 and we've since. And Gas man. We, yeah, we get on really well. We're really straight with each other, I think, which yeah. is important. There's no, you know, if someone disagrees with me, or I just, we all we, we, we tell it as it is. Like, we're fair with the players. I think I like to think we're fair with the players and the parents. And, uh, but yeah, I look, you'd love to. To be up there someday. Yeah. Is it going? To, has many Sligo people managed Sligo Rovers? No. Do you know that's the honest truth. Again, you're on about the pressure. Be first. Yeah, be on about the pressure as a player, right? As a local, there'll be a lot more yeah, pressure in there. Be, yeah. <laughs> and you'll be listening to all that behind you, and you'll be able to hear it. It wouldn't be like you could be out there hiding. But uh, yeah, look, of course. Uh, look, I'd love to. If it wasn't Sligo Rovers, I. I Ever come up, I, I would like to have a go at it. Oh, unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, I'm not allowed to shake your hand, Connor, but I would like to, first of all, thank you for giving up your time tonight and Harry for coming out. It's a nice night. Uh, I really enjoyed the chat. And secondly, as a Sligo Rovers fan, uh, I'd like to thank you for all the memories and all the service and hard work you put in over the years. Uh, players like you that made it such a great club. And um, thanks for coming in tonight, and hopefully, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, thank Connor. You. Cheers, folks, for tuning in to another episode of The Last Man Back with tonight's guest, Sly Rovers legend, Conor O'Grady. Before I leave tonight, I just want to make a special mention and thanks to tonight's sponsors, Lily's Cocktail Bar on Bridge Street. Without the boys, Sean, Blaine and Jamie, tonight's episode wouldn't have been possible, as with all our sponsors throughout the episodes. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.